Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As I promised, we are going to be adding JavaScript to this simple overlay effect. Right now, to display this, we just commented out this line of display to none. So when we uncomment it and save, so we shall not be seeing that overlay when we land on the page, and this is what we want. So we need to add a simple button in our markup here that the user will click on display that and then also when they click this x button we need it to close this overlay effect or element sorry so right now we are going to display this to none we don't want to see it so let's go back in our markup and somewhere here Let's add a simple button. Remember, I already have some base stylings for the button, so I'm going to give it a class of BTN. You followed the previous tutorial. If not, so I'm going to leave it the description below. You're going to have a simple button, and I'm just going to write learn more. And this is what we are having. I'm going to give it some ID of open overlay. So these IDs are user defined, so you can call it anything you want so long as you reference to it JavaScript. Then I'm going to go to this div with a class of close and add another ID. Sorry, add this ID attribute. And this one is going to be close over it. So when the user clicks that times icon, this is the ID that's going to be having. Now we can write the JavaScript on the same page, but I like creating separate files for different functionalities. So as we created the style.css for our design, then let us also create the script.js file for the JavaScript code. So script.js and I'm going to link this file right before the closing body tag. So script script. I'm going to pass in the source attribute where the file is located. Write script.js because they are in the same directory, the same level. So in the script.js file as always you have to listen for the document load so everything on the page has to be fully loaded for you to execute that code so i so just write document dot add event listener and the event that we want is called dom content loaded so when everything is loaded then we shall pass in this callback arrow function that will always run when everything has fully loaded on the page. So it's always good to put this code in place. So we are listening on the document. When everything is fully loaded in the DOM, then we are ready or allowed to execute this. But just preference, I always do it when I'm writing JavaScript. So let us create some two variables here and we want to have access to this button and the close button so i'm just going to call this one open btn so this is the open button i'm going to select it in the dom using the query selector so document query selector so you can use get element by id but i prefer this i can select it like the way you do in css we shall just say Hash. So this is how you select an ID and we say open over. So this is the ID that we gave to this button. Remember, open over is the ID we gave to this button. Then let us create another variable here. Say close btn. We are going to say document, not source, source mate document dot query selector and 
we are going to select this ID of close over it. So the one on the close icon, say hash close over it. So now the next thing that we are going to do is add event listeners on these buttons. Let us all sorry, I had forgotten. Then we need to be having access also to this ovary. Remember, for it, it already has a class, and this is the beauty of again this very selector. We shall say, just say const, I'm going to give it a variable of ovary. I say document dot query selector query selector and we are going to select that class of ovary so here we're not saying get elements by class names or class name so we are just using this document dot query selector and we are selecting this deal with the class of ovary so these are the two variables that we need right now so the open button so this one is the button that's going to open the ovary then close btn it's other exit so that the user will be clicking on to close ovary then we also select ovary because we are going to be setting its display to block or none when the user clicks on this display to block then when click x none very very simple so let us start with the open btn so we say open btn open btn dot add event listener and the type of event that we want to add is the click event so when the user clicks it then we are going to pass in this callback arrow function so if you don't want to write this arrow function you just pass in the like the word function this will do the same so i i want to be on the latest arrow functions using this so when the user clicks on that button so the open btn which is this I want to get this over it variable that we created and we set its style oh, style dot display we set it to block block that's for see when the user clicks this display this over and see then it us first refresh so when the user clicks this they, dis they are setting the display to block so they will be displaying this the browser so now we want when the user clicks this close button the display to none then let us select the close btn and we add an event listen on it also the event that we want to add is also click we pass in this callback function what happens when we click on it then we are going to get that overlay remember this is the variable that we created here and we get its style attribute display none oh <laughs> have to assign no can use double quotes or single quotes but i want to be uniform i use single quotes throughout so let's see when i click click this so this one displays to block when you click that open btn displays the ovary so when you click on the cross button displays none very very simple but as you can see when the user clicks this just pops up or bumps in so as you can see then we need to add some simple animation somehow it fading in 
So to do that, we are going to go back to our style. This is the simple JavaScript that we wrote. So for the open button, face close button, it closes. So we want adding some simple fed in effect to this content. And let us go to our style dot css and we look for the info remember this div is inside this content is inside a div with a class of info so we need to go to the info and we add in this animation property and i'm going to give the name the animation name i'm just going to call it channel info so this is user defined you can call it anything you want and i want it to take one second then the timing function or the animation timing function is going to be easing and it's going to delay 0 0.5 seconds so this is the animation name animation duration animation time function timing function and this is the animation delay so it's going to delay 5 seconds and let us create this animation I'm going to go at the bottom you can put it right there but i prefer putting these keyframes at the bottom so key frames oh my keyboard has rolled so key frames then write the other name that you gave to the animation where is it channel info i write it here and here going to pass in let's say at zero percent we want the opacity to be zero and at a hundred percent we want the opacity opacity to be one see by made some mistake here at first we need to set this opacity to zero so we don't want it to be visible take that it's going to delay oh or give me I guess i'm missing something here let's say the animation Build mode forwards. So I figured it. So, guys, I made a mistake here. As you can see, the animation name it's not the same as what I've written here. So, I need to add some here for it to work so this is what it does so when the user opens this it's going to delay 1.5 seconds and then fade in so we first set the opacity to zero here then the animation what this let me show you what this does it may fade in and fade out so to add this animation fill mode forwards it always pause on this so opacity one that's where it will pause but if you don't specify this to go back to the opacity of zero so we need to pause where the animation has ended so when it stops at the opacity of one that's where i want it to end at 100 percent user clicks it 1.5 second it fades in so guys this is the simple javascript that we wrote display this and close and add in some few simple animations to get this fading effect so guys subscribe to the channel if these tutorials were useful to you comment down let me know what i should create next i'm thinking of starting some php tutorials so let me know in the comments below i'll see tutorials peace